Hey everyone, welcome to the Electric Supercar Channel. This week we're gonna tackle the rear disassembly of the Porsche. Let's get to it. We've got a lot to get to today, but first let me tell you about our sponsor, Conflict of Nations, World War III. Conflict of Nations is a free online PVP strategy game. Choose a real country to lead in World War III. Fight up to 128 players in real time in games that can take up to weeks to complete. Use many different units to build your army. Tanks, jets, nuclear submarines. Declare war on your neighbors or forge allies. Choose your own strategy, engage in epic battles, and take over the world. You can play with the same account on PC and mobile. You get an exclusive gift, so click on the link in the description. 13,000 gold and one month of premium subscription for free. Offer is only available for 30 days. Conflict of Nations is a free online PvP game happening in modern global warfare. Choose your own strategy, engage in epic battles, and take over the world. You get an exclusive gift. Click on the link in the description below to get 13,000 gold and one month subscription for free. So click the link in the description and choose your country to fight for victory. So I went to the DMV to talk about the salvage vehicle and see how to get it registered. Let me show you how that went. I am walking to the DMV. Let's go. If, if they just give me a bill of sale, will that work? Yep. So I, I wouldn't need to worry about the reassignment if they give me a bill of sale? Mm -hmm. It's a 2014, yes. so you'll need an admissions and a safety done on it. Okay. So I do have a couple questions as it relates to that. So this is a salvage title. Yep. Do I need to do anything special to get that registered? Uh, no, just the safety. Safety. The safety and admissions. Okay. So it'll require both of those. And then we're going to convert it to a rebuilt, restored title. That, that brings me, to, I guess, to one more question. Uh -huh. I know I'm giving you a lot of questions. No, 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 you're fine. So uh, one of the things that I do, so this is kind of a hobby for me, is I'm, I convert cars from gas to electric. Okay. So if I'm doing it from gas to electric, would it be better to get it registered first as a gas and then convert it, or should I wait till it's converted? I would convert it, that way everything goes together. And you don't have to do the admissions. You would have to just do the safety. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. I ended up purchasing it through a broker, and so I just need some paperwork, a bill of sale from that person. Other than that, it needs a safety inspection. That's what is required to get this to be a rebuilt title instead of a salvage title. So what does that mean for this build? It means that I'm not exactly sure what they're going to be checking on for the safety. So next step, go to a safety place and see what they check. So in my state, they've actually uh, abandoned the safety inspection. So almost all the places that used to do safety and emissions, they've all let their safety uh, certifications lapse. So I did talk to one or two uh, certified safety technicians. Do you guys do vehicle safety inspections? I'm certified. Because I've got a salvage car that I'm looking to rebuild, like get a rebuilt title, and so it needs a safety inspection. Mm -hmm. um, do you know... I guess since you're a certified technician, what are some of the things they look for? Um, brakes need to be above uh, 2 to 30 seconds in thickness. Um, tires need to be above 1 30 second in tread depth. Uh, all the lights need to work. Uh, so when you say lights, like headlights, turn signals, brakes? Headlights, brake. turn signals, okay. brake lights, the tail lights. Um, the front end needs to not have any play in it whatsoever. So we say play like suspension, like loose bearings, tie rods, things like that? Yes. Okay. Okay. So, so that's, those are the basic things. Is there any engine stuff that you do? Or is it like engines more on the emission side? Or like... Just the emission side. Of okay. I just test it. Okay. We don't do any repairs or anything. Yeah, understood. Yeah. All right. Well, I think that helps me a little bit. So, glad I could help you. It was <laughs> All right, well, thanks. Yep. So I looked at the internet. It seems like uh, most of the inspection things, I really can't see anything that talks about the engine or motor. I think we're good to continue and disassemble, get ready for the motor swap. All right, I put my charged battery back in. That little bugger is what drained it all. All right, it's just running through its checks. Again, the lights that I've already taken out, 
cool and slow, steering something. There's not too many lights. Porsche did not uh, make it easy to open anything, so I cannot open the rear hatch here without the battery. There we go. Um, here on the passenger side, this is like locked tight, so I'm not gonna be able to get uh, this one off. So I'm gonna have to take off the seat belt from down there. All right, I didn't know about these before, but uh, this is the triple square. So this is why I need to remove the seat belts. We now have access to the top side of the motor. Um, as I'm disassembling, I'm also trying to think of some weight saving things. So metal and sound dampening and heat shielding that I think we can remove. All right, it is time to get this on a lift. So I'm gonna back it out. This might be the last time it moves under gas power. We are in the process of trying to move the lift out of the attached garage to the detached garage. Putting it on some of these heavy duty casters, not easy. All right, we made it. So I borrowed some of these uh, Heavy duty, it's got big old plate steel and three gigantic casters. Moved it from that garage over to here. The only challenge was anytime we had a bump. But we moved it over, so now we can get it up, get the exhaust off, look at the engine mounts, get the engine down, all that fun stuff. All right, there's lots of places under the engine here where it's got this, it's kind of a reverse Torx. 
So there, there, kind of several places on the exhaust. So I ended up getting this guy. So again, I already have some Torx bits, but it's nice to uh, have them be compatible with an impact driver. And then I've got this as well. This was all less than 20 bucks at Amazon. I'll put a link in the description. All right, the battery just died, but um, I took the tray off. There was two supporting arms. Man, there's a lot that just supports the weight of the exhaust. Um, right now I'm gonna take off the center brace so I get better access to the transmission. Probably also have to take off the sway bar, and then I'm also gonna take off the uh, exhaust headers. It is amazing how much it takes to support the exhaust. I mean, some of this is like a skid plate, but uh, a lot of these are just brackets that mount to the frame to support the weight of the exhaust. And I swear each of these must weigh like 30 pounds or so. Um, even that, that's just to support the exhaust. Because under here, the transmission's got its own mounts. So really, again, all that was just for the exhaust. All right, exhaust headers are out. It's looking really good. Again, the exhaust manifolds, mufflers, tailpipe, all that stuff, and all the bracing. It is amazing how much mass weight is dedicated to just getting the spent fuel, the exhaust, out of the car. All right, it is good to have the lift back in operation so we can get some of this stuff uh, a little easier access. Um, right now, we're gonna actually go to cooling. So we're gonna drain both cooling and oil so you can get a lot of these fluids out of the vehicle. So close, I've got one bolt left. And it does not want to come out. So this was my uh, security bit one and it snapped off. And I was using the impacts, I thought, oh, maybe that's what's going on. That and the hole in the middle is gonna weaken it. So I went with this one, which is a whole one. It did the same thing. So I thought, okay, no more impact. I'll just use a regular driver. I don't know if you can tell, but that one's starting to twist as well. So, we'll have to get out some extraction tools. While we're waiting for the coolant to train, I'm gonna go ahead and drain the oil as well. I don't know that I've ever seen a pink or red coolant. If you guys know what that is, let me know. All right, so a um, little bit of oil is still going, but the uh, coolant is now pretty much stopped. Well, I've read somewhere that if you kind of pressurize the overflow tank that you get a lot more cooling out. So I'm gonna try that real quick. I wasn't expecting that.
So it probably took me an hour just to take this off. The other side, I'm guessing like 15 minutes. So much easier the second time. got the cooling off here from the front both sides um, I thought the initial uh, radiator heat exchanger was uh, for cooling it actually turns out that, that was for the AC so it was a pressurized system it kind of scared me when that went off um, I'm actually gonna go ahead and leave hoses and wires in place in case I want to utilize kind of the same hoses and wires but uh, yeah it's looking really good all right so we're also gonna leave the uh, coolant pump and things in place just in case we may want to reuse that one um, if it happens to be in the way of some of the other space we need we'll go ahead and take it out but uh, that's where we're gonna leave things for now all right here at the end we're also gonna see how much weight we've taken off so we're gonna go ahead and get the scales out again There we are, 2510. All right, so now it's 43 front, 57 rear. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and call that one back end disassembly. So besides the trunk, we accessed the engine from on top as well as the bottom and took out the exhaust as well as a lot of the coolant. We've got parts kind of all over the place. Got everything labeled over there. These are kind of some of the tools I used. The tools I will highlight this time so again, this is the triple square. These are kind of a unique bit. Also, I really like these, uh, good Torx drivers as well as uh, we'll call them Torx sockets. So again, that one's really cheap, like 20 bucks. Um, the other thing with the exhaust, um, cordless impact didn't always break things loose. So I do have a pneumatic one, that one works great. This is just a really cheap cobalt one. I actually got a more expensive one once and um, it didn't work as well. So recommend that one. Also some breaker bars. This is a little tool for some of the plastic clips, and I'll put a link in the video description for some of these tools. You can find them all on Amazon. All right, everybody, we're gonna cut it off for there for this time. Uh, we've got some exciting stuff. Uh, motor is here. So next week we'll get to unboxing and uh, maybe even take out the motor on the Porsche. So see you next time.